we know there's been a lot of anxiety um, on uh, emails that have come in from people that are saying, how am I going to live? And I always bring people back to the scripture. It says, do not be anxious for tomorrow of what you will eat or what you will wear. My concern is when a scripture is placed there in the Bible for that reason, it must be because most people are going to fail in not being anxious for tomorrow. Now, God is not twisting anything and he's not trying to torture us. His world is truth. Man's world is a lie, which is what Satan basically has most people guarantor to be involved in. We consent to back up a lie. So when I went through the research on truth, and I came mainly from this because I came from a very, very a biblically based family that was, in their mind, dedicating their lives, they believed whole solely to God and to his word and to doing what they thought was right from the scripture, yet still misled to an extent uh, within the world of secular religion. The concern was for me was to find truth. And when I found it, what would I do with it? If it was not convenient for me to walk with truth, would I just give it up, rationalize and stick it off to the side and say, well, what I found it was truth because it doesn't work well for some who have gone out and got mortgages that they want them discharged because someone told them that the whole money game is fraud. Well, that wouldn't make any sense. They walked into something. The reality was, the truth was, they signed on to the consequence of what they were doing. And then they said they didn't want to pay it. Well, whether the contract's fraud or not, it's not fraud when you're consenting. And you can't hold on to the property of someone else and not pay for it. Whether it's a made-up piece of property or not. That is the world of fiction. What's happened is people now are on this anxiety position of saying, how do I stay doing what I'm doing and why isn't Christian man Daniel discharging my debts? Why isn't he paying my rent? Why isn't he giving me the knowledge to go and do the following things? But that's the world they're in in the fiction. Truth doesn't work in fiction. So if you're trying to support truth mixed in with fiction, God's not going to be there to help you. Now you can remove truth from a lie and then the lie falls. It just collapses because there's nothing to support it. It'd be very much like the spirit removed from a body. Man's world is legal. God's world's grace. God's world is good. Man's world has the evil and the carnal and the penalty that goes with it. One is real, one is fiction. It's very simple. It's not impossible to put the two together because people are doing it. And that's how our world works right now. So most of the frustration that's happened from emails that have come in to me is I'm feeling that the people aren't even ready for the journey because they still want to hold on to what they have to actually abandon. And then the journey begins from there. So their communications, unfortunately, are inaccurate. Their communications, whether to me or even to possibly even government officials, may have some error still in there. More than not, if they're getting responses that seem very frustrating, it's because they're still speaking in error. That's why we're going to be breaking down a number of things in the following videos that are going to clarify some points that I think that people have sloughed over or their ears just weren't really listening. And I feel bad because I actually know now, having gone through the idea of trying to find the best way to teach people, and I hope that none of the videos I've done is try to talk down to people because that was never the intention. More than not, when I even did lectures or seminars, um, I tried to do it where I was standing on the same ground level, eye to eye with the people, than trying to be up on a platform, sometimes by just chance, rooms were selected for me to speak in that did have me up on a rise or a platform, but I usually try to clarify it wasn't my choice to be up about eight or 10 or two feet above them. I preferred not to do that. 
So right now we're, we're now trying to clarify the meat and the potatoes of this. And I think people are going to have to really turn their listening ears on and remove their ego, remove their blame. Uh, because I cannot solve someone's internal dilemma. Only God can do that. And he can only do that through someone accepting truth. And what the reality is, and that's what we said in the previous video, that only God's kingdom that was being prayed for, that is still prayed even in processions at municipalities before they start their meetings, even at the parliament, that is the only solution because man can't fix his problem. Only Christ fixed the human race. We know who wins. Only Christians win. Only those that are his followers win because they have to accept something they can't earn. And people are trying to salvage something that can't be salvaged. So we're trying to reach people with the truth from God's word but you have to stop sending communications to our site that ask, how do I solve my secular problems being a secular participant? And so the next videos are dealing with these concerns based on the reality of what they're doing and what the words mean. And if you are using words and using property in a manner that makes you obligated, you're obligated. If you don't want to contract, don't contract. And if you want to separate, then you must separate. This book was talking about be ye separate for those that were believers of Christ, not be ye in the aggregate. So the fear factor is, oh, my friends won't like me. It appears I'm going to seem like I'm a civil dead guy. I have no civil rights. Well, we're going to get into these subjects. And the reality and the truth is going to come out on this. And whether it is a bitter pill to swallow, the truth will set you free. Your error will keep you in captivity. Listen closely on the next videos.